Trump scares me rigid. I can't see any other way to state my opinion about the man. He is a fascist, we know he is, and to me, that is deeply frightening. It frightens me for the people of the USA. It worries me that the people of the USA are even considering voting a fascist into office with all the consequences that follow, including the end of the rule of law, the oppression of minorities, violence against immigrants, the oppression of political opponents, the abuse of women because he is deeply misogynist and is denying them the right to choose, the oppression of trade unions almost certainly, the promotion of wealth and the suppression of the majority of people in the country whose interests he will not serve, and on and on and on. He is a danger. But the danger doesn't only extend to the boundaries of the USA. Because where the USA goes, I'm afraid to say the UK goes too. We've already heard Labour ministers saying, of course they will deal with Trump if he is elected. It's up to the people of America to choose which president they want. But when that president then sets out to establish fascism in America, I believe it will be the duty of the government of the UK to stand up and say, no, this is not acceptable. We have learned the lessons from history. You cannot do that and we will not cooperate. Do I expect that from Labour? No, not at all. I'm sure they will just say, that's the American way. They can decide. But as I said, where the US goes, the UK follows. And Labour has shown no interest in human rights already. If they were going to do so, they've had ample opportunity to already set out their stall. They could have announced their intention to reverse the draconian powers introduced by the last Tory government that involved the suppression of all forms of demonstration, which involved the creation of noise, but they haven't. They could have changed the ridiculous rules on the sentencing of people who oppose the action of companies that accelerate climate change, but they haven't. They could have done a great deal to make it clear that they were on the side of the right to free speech, but nothing has been delivered. So Labour are not on the side of freedom when it comes to this issue. Labour are quite willing to maintain the powers that were put in place by some very far-right members of the last Tory administrations. And why does this scare me, Richard? I remember a time when, in 2016, I took my two sons to Dachau in Germany. Dachau was the first of the concentration camps created by the Nazis very soon after they took over power in Germany in 1933. My elder son read the information boards in the first building that we went into. And within minutes of our arrival there, he came up to me and said, Dad, you'd have been in here. And I suspect he was right, because if you recall, at that time I was working quite a lot for trade unions and also having some influence on the thinking of Jeremy Corbyn and the left of the Labour Party. I would have been seen as the type of person who a fascist government considered to be a threat to all that it wanted to do. Nazis did not inter Jews, first of all. They interred priests and trade union leaders and socialists and intellectuals and those they thought to be troublemakers. They did try to suppress those who created and promoted ideas that opposed what fascists wanted to do. I think it's fair to say that I have been opposed to fascism all my life. I think quite explicitly since about 2005, I have been aware of the threat of fascism to what I do. Way back then, John Christensen and I, we effectively co-founded the functioning element of the Tax Justice Network, identified that the biggest threat to our work was the rise of fascism. I still think it is. And as a consequence, yes, I do feel threatened by fascism. I do feel very personally threatened by Trump. He does scare me rigid. But so too does Labour's attitude scare me rigid. 
because I have no confidence that if fascism was to rise in this country, Labour would do anything about it. And I believe that their incompetence is of making it possible for that to happen because these people don't care enough about the well-being of the people in this country to ensure that the far right will be kept in its box here. It was in the 1930s, but will it be nearly a century later? I don't know. And for everyone who has stood out against the crowd when it comes to fascism, that creates a real threat. We do need to be scared rigid by Trump. Thanks for watching this video. If you like what you've seen, please subscribe to this channel and push that bell button that tells you when we posted something new. You can also find me on Twitter at Richard J. Murphy. And more importantly, you can follow my blog, the Funding the Future blog. And if you do, you'll get daily updates on what is happening in our economy and in the politics that surround it.